morning and welcome to Rye Hill Baptist Church for Sunday morning, June 26, 2022. This morning's message brought to us by Senior Pastor Michael Franklin is entitled, The Reality of Freedom, taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. Enjoy. Romans chapter 8. We are walking through the book of Romans verse by verse and line by line. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have studying it. And I will tell you right now, uh, if there was only one chapter I could have in the Word of God, just one, I think it would be Romans 8. I really do. I've thought about this a lot. There's other books and other chapters that mean a lot to me. But you are in Romans 8 going to see everything from salvation to what Betty spoke of, uh, which is prayer and uh, just the victory. There's three straight sermons here I'll be preaching uh, that I tell you what, I love this scripture. And uh, of course, I love all the Word of God, but this is special to me. Today, I want to talk to you about the reality of freedom. The reality of freedom. And again, it doesn't have anything to do with the 4th of July. Okay, we have God and Country Day next week. It's just the way uh, this fell in the title uh, I chose. Uh, If you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, let me give you the outline. Number one, freedom from the law. Freedom from the law. We have talked about this all through the book of Romans. There's nothing wrong with the law. But folks, we as Christians have the Holy Spirit inside of us to guide us. Number two, freedom from the flesh. Freedom from the flesh. I don't know about you, but I hate my flesh, okay? I just hate it. And here's the kicker. And I know people even, they don't challenge me on it, but they they do not believe what I'm fixing to say. You don't have to sin. You don't have to. It's a choice. And I think this teaching will show you exactly how you can keep from sinning. I did not say you would never sin. I'm not saying you're perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I'm telling you, you don't have to sin. Satan cannot make you sin. He can only tempt you to sin. Number three, freedom in the Spirit. And the Spirit is, I'm telling you folks, it's everything to a believer. If you are saved, you have the Spirit of God inside of you. And there is nothing that you cannot do with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit behind you. That Spirit is inside of us. It wells up inside of us. It speaks to us. It leads us. It guides us. And folks, you will see how important walking in the Spirit is. You know, the Holy Word of God is a book that offers the good news of salvation from sin. It also presents the bad news of condemnation for sin. No collection of books proclaims so completely the total desperate situation of man apart from God. The Bible reveals that since the fall, every human being that has been born into the world has a sin nature. Man is not simply influenced by sin, but he is completely overpowered by it, and no one can escape that dominance by their own efforts. Sin is in every a human being born, and its deadly force brings universal depravity that no one can cure. That's the bad news. The good news is because Jesus, because of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection, man can be saved from their sins by God's grace, grace and faith in Jesus Christ. As a Christian, you can be free from the bondage of sin according to Romans chapter 8. Let's look at Romans 8, verse 1. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore. Why? What is therefore? Why, why is there therefore? He's talking about chapter 7, okay? It was what we spoke of uh, two weeks ago of where Paul was just saying, I know what to do and I don't do it. I know what I should be doing and I don't do that. And he's saying, you know, who's going to deliver me from this sin? And one of the last things he says in chapter 7 Jesus Christ, our Lord, can deliver you from sin. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. 
We know what the word condemned means because of the court system. And when someone's condemned, all right, to prison, when someone's condemned to a certain sentence, it cannot be changed. And folks, we, before we met Christ, were condemned. We were condemned to hell. That's what the Word of God teaches. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ is the opposite of that. And now that we're saved, we are no longer condemned. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And when you say flesh, I'm not talking about our bodies, okay? Our bodies are neutral, okay? When we say flesh, we are talking about uh, that worldly desire, that desire you had before you got saved. And we know that the Spirit is the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. If you've ever been caged up, if you've ever been in a place, uh, sometimes even... Uh, Steve and I, we've been in quarantine. Well, you've been in quarantine four times, and I've been in quarantine three times. And when you get out of that, man, you feel free. Finally, I get to get out. Finally, I get to do something. Well, folks, I got something better than that. We as Christians are free from sin. We are free. And it says, and death, which again is separation from God. For what the law could not do in that it was weak, Through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin. Folks, I am telling you, there is no law. There is no law, folks, uh, when, when you think about that. For instance, let me give you an example. Laws don't keep you from sinning. You just go stand out here in our parking lot and get a radar gun and go down the highway there and, and it's 45 miles an hour. And I'm telling you, you could pick up every other car and get... The law says 45. Well, we don't, we don't go 45. There's laws that says thou shalt not murder. What do you think goes on in our world? Laws don't keep you from sinning is what I'm trying to say. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ. It is the Spirit of God that lives in you. And we in the flesh, in our, in our sin, Christ died for our sins. Listen, folks, never take the cross lightly. He died. His blood paid for our sins. The propitiation was paid for, paid in full. Matter of fact, hold your finger there for just a minute and go to 2 Corinthians 5. I want you to see you need to be very clear on this issue. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. If you die in your sin, you will die apart from Christ. But because of Jesus Christ, he lived a perfect life here on earth. And some people say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I do. The Bible says it, folks. He lived a perfect life, and he Uh, uh, became sin for us. He paid the penalty for our sin. Now look at this, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Folks, I am telling you, if we would just ask ourselves that question, one question, what would Jesus do? And do that, folks. I'm not saying you would be perfect, but you would make many more good decisions when it comes to sin. Jesus paid. His blood paid for your sin. You don't have to be lost today. You don't have to be without purpose today. You just need to come to Jesus Christ and accept Jesus as your Savior by faith. Then it says, if you'll keep reading with me in Romans, for what the law could not do, then that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On the account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You know what? Some people say this, well, I sin and I hate myself because I sin. I regret I sin. 
And I've even heard some people say, why doesn't God, when you get saved, just take you up right then? Why don't he just get you out of this world and you don't have to deal with sin anymore? Folks, that's the explanation right there in the Scripture that we just read. He leaves you here so that you can be a testimony for Jesus Christ and for God. And for when you walk with God and you talk with God and you meditate on Scripture and and you pray for people and you love people and you give testimony, you are telling people how good God is. It's not my life. It's God's life. I died to self when I accepted Jesus Christ to come into my life. This week again, it happens all the time. People say, man, I love to hear what's going on at Rye Hill Baptist Church. I love to hear and, and, and to see what is going on there. And then they'll say, you are doing a great job. Folks, I'm telling you, it's not me. It's Christ in me. It's the Holy Spirit. We have to give God the credit in me, in me. Folks, there's, I mean, even the Bible says there's nothing good in us. And I understand being saved. I understand doing the right thing. But I'm simply saying, folks, we need God every moment of our lives. We need to give God the glory for anything good that happens in our lives. And I'm just getting old enough to understand there's two laws they're talking about here. The law is the law, the commandments in the Old Testament. And I understand also there are man-made laws. By the way, folks, did we not experience a great victory when they overturned Roe versus Wade this week? Fifty years of doing the wrong thing. Now lives will be saved. Because, folks, it's God, folks. God made that happen. And no law. I mean, that's a man-made law. And, folks, people break laws. Matter of fact, I could give you an example in the Scripture. Matthew chapter 19. You talk about somebody. He is a better person than you and I. I promise you, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, Now behold, one came and said to him, Jesus, good teacher, what things shall I do that I may have eternal life? He wanted to know how to be saved. He wanted to know. So he said, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said, which ones? And then he starts quoting the laws. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Did not bear false witness? The guy never lied. He's better than you and I, folks. Laws cannot save you. Laws cannot keep you from breaking laws. Now look what it says. And he said, Jesus said it again, if you want to be perfect, and again, that's not sinless perfection. That's Christian maturity. If you want what I want, want want, want what I have, okay? Because for him to ask that question, there must have been something still missing in his life. And I'll tell you what was missing It was a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, you can be good. You can be a good person. You can be a good father. You can be a good employee. But I'm telling you, folks, if you die without Christ, you lose everything. And the Bible says, be perfect. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. Follow Jesus. Make that profession of faith. Invite Jesus Christ into your life. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. What was his problem? Folks, it was money. It was worldly things. He did not want to give up his treasures, his bank account, or what what he deemed 
is what was most important to him. He walked away according to Scripture and never to be heard of again. And folks, unless there was a God intervention somewhere else, that rich man died and went to hell. See, he knew the law. He obeyed the law, but he lacked one thing, and that was making Jesus Lord of his life. So we know there is freedom from the law. There's not anything wrong with laws. There's not anything, but the law cannot save you, and the law cannot keep you from sinning. So we see as Christians, we have freedom from the law. The second thing we have is freedom from the flesh. Freedom from the flesh. And here's where it gets good. There's good, and we're going to have a gooder after this, all right? English teachers, I know, that drives you crazy, but I like it, all right? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. What is the flesh? Worldly things. And folks, it's not wrong to have things. This guy didn't go to hell because he was rich. It was because he rejected Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So we have two kinds of people. We have people that just follows the flesh, does what they want to do. They're in their own world. Don't bother me. Don't preach to me. Don't tell me about the Bible. I don't want to hear it. You may believe it, but I don't believe it. Those are worldly people. Those are people that are lost. And then we have others who live according to the Spirit, and those, those people are hungry for things of God. They want to read their Bible. They like to pray. They enjoy going to church. They share their testimony and their witnesses with others. Now look at verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have a choice. If carnal, carnality is just living in the flesh, living it up, okay? A life without God, okay? Just, just if it feels good, do it. You know, the generations that just come along and just think that blatant sin is okay. Folks, our world promotes sin all the time. There's a homosexual agenda on every TV show, it seems like. This transgender thing, folks, I'm telling you, God made man and woman, and he did not make a mistake. He didn't. Doesn't matter how, how many hormones you take. I am telling you, this stuff is just bombarding the spiritual world, and the church. And we as Christians need to let people know that we are saved. We are in love with Jesus Christ. We are walking in the Spirit. And we want these folks saved and to come join us. Verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And folks, we have life, eternal life. We have peace. Okay, I'll be talking about peace tonight peace tonight. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. A carnal mind decides for themselves. They don't check in with God. They don't consider what Jesus would do. They simply live for themselves. And it says, uh, and, and, and it's very clear here, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we have one of two people, one of two kinds in the world, those who live in the flesh and those who live in the Spirit. The ones who live in the flesh are not children of God. The ones who live in the Spirit are children of God. And if you are living in the flesh, if all you care about is yourself, your agenda, I'll do what I want to do. If it feels good, I'll do it. And you stay out of my life. It simply says, you cannot please God. And most people like that, they're not trying to please God. Okay, matter of fact, Christianity is a burden to them. Just listening. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to pray. They don't want you preaching at them. Don't you hear that out in the world? Don't preach at me. Why? Because folks, they're lost. They are living in the flesh. Matter of fact, 
uh, there's 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at this clear uh, picture of what I'm trying to say here. Two, two kinds of people. First is the Christian. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. Christians, you are a chosen generation. God chose you, a royal priesthood. We were adopted into the family of God, a holy nation. Holy means pure, pure, one who is like Christ, his own special people, that you make proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I love our praise and worship time. Man, the choir was getting happy up here, happy and clappy. Wasn't that good? Doesn't that get you excited about uh, the services and it gets you excited about you know, serving the Lord Jesus Christ? That's what Christ does in our lives. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people, but now the people of God who had not obtained mercy and now have obtained obtained mercy. What's mercy? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. God has called us out of darkness into the light. Now look at verse 11. The lost world. Paul is saying, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Folks, there's temptation everywhere. Everywhere there's temptation. And we as Christians, I'm telling you, I'm so glad we have remotes on TVs. Because I can be watching a game, a baseball game, football game, whatever, and when they take a break, I, I mean before, when, when I see they take a break, I grab my remote. Why? Because you don't know what's going to be on there. Okay? I mean, in a second like this, you have some beautiful girl, half her chest hanging out and selling cars or beer. Okay? Folks, I don't need to see that as a man of God. You don't need to see that as a Christian. The world flaunts it in front of us. Satan tempts us all the time. And you have to do one of two things. Change the channel or turn the TV off. That's what he's saying. He's saying we need to abstain. Say no to temptation is what he's saying. And it's a war. Notice how he says this. We're not talking about a little boxing match here. We're talking about a war. There's this, this, this fight going on inside of you. It's right and it's wrong. And they're bam, bam, bam. And you have really about two seconds to decide about what you're going to do. Are you going to leave it on that channel or are you going to change it? Are you going to walk with God, or are you going to uh, just uh, you know, give in to your flesh? Look what it says, verse 12. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. You should be so right with God. You should be so walking with God that if someone even talks about you and tries to gossip about, about you, the other person would say, I don't believe it. Gossip, my friend. If they come up and said something totally, I, I would just say, I don't believe it. I really don't. And you know what I'd say? I'd say, why don't we go talk to Scott? You, me, and that person. And you tell them what you just said about me. Folks, that, and again, we're not perfect. We're staff. We're, I'm not even trying to say we're perfect. I'm just saying that you lived your life so much in the Spirit that people can't even lie on you. They would just say, there's no way. Steve Stewart didn't say that. I didn't say that. And that's what he's talking about, folks. We have to stay out of the flesh and we have to walk in the Spirit all at all times. It sneaks up on you. It comes to you. It's quick about it. Sometimes it's just, you just have a second or two to decide, are you going to walk in the flesh or are you going to walk in the Spirit? So we have freedom from the law. We have freedom from the flesh. And we have freedom in the Spirit. I love this part. Look at verse 9. But you are not 
in the flesh. <laughs> I don't have to be in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Oh, folks, you need to know that you know that you know. If you can sin and it not bother you, I would be concerned about my profession of faith. Now, I'm not saying you won't, you know, you won't ever sin. But I'm just saying if it doesn't even bother you, folks, the Holy Spirit is inside of us, convicting us of our sins. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not here. And again, the flesh and the Spirit, the saved and the lost, he is speaking of. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be morbid here, but if there was a dead person, if there was a person in a casket sitting right here, I'm just telling you, you could do whatever you want, and they're not going to move. They're not going to change. And folks, that's the approach that we have to have to sin. You have to say, I am dead to sin. I don't want to live in sin anymore. I want to be alive in Jesus Christ. Folks, dead men don't talk. You won't even say the wrong thing. You can't say the wrong thing. If you die in Christ, if you die with Christ, if you let Christ reign in your life. Look at verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Why would he say this last sentence? And a lot of times people pass over this, but I'm telling you, why is he mentioning the resurrection of Christ? I'll tell you why. Because every one of you sitting here probably has one or two sins that you cannot overcome. And you have convinced yourself you cannot overcome. But folks, our Bible says something different. My Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And his point is, if God can resurrect the dead, He can take care of your sin. He can keep you from sinning. But we have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. And folks, that choice is life. That choice is walking in the Spirit. That choice is feeding our spirit. That choice is worship and fellowship with other believers. Don't tell me you can't do it. I don't believe that. I believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Three times in this text, he says you will die, which will be a separation from God if you live in the flesh. But if by the Spirit, you put death, the deeds of the body, you will live. Folks, we have to crucify our flesh. We have to die to self. We have to say, God, I am making you Lord of my life. From now on, from now on, I am going to be dead to sin. I am going to listen to you. Verse 14, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. My biological father passed away 12 years ago. And I learned a lot from my father. I really did. A lot of good things. But you know what? I have a spiritual father. I have a father that is in heaven. I have a God that looks out over me. I have a God that loves me. I have a God that sent his son to die for me. I am a child of the King. A child of the King. The Bible says in verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. And folks, here's what bondage is. Bondage is just going back and forth, going back and forth, going back and forth. Folks, I have fought this my whole life. The picture that you know what I'm fixing to say. My bondage is food. Okay, my bondage is sweet. I have lost 567 pounds in my lifetime. 
I'm not proud of it. I'm really not. But Scott, we've talked about this. Until you make it a spiritual issue, it's not going to change. You have to make it a spiritual issue. You have to say, with God, I can do it. I can do it. And I'm telling you a weakness in my own life. We all have them, but don't settle. Don't just say, you know, I can't do it. I've tried. Folks, I believe God can save folks from any addiction. In ad any addiction. And it begins many times with salvation. Some people just need to get saved. Okay? But God is with you. His Spirit is inside of you. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be in bondage. Look at the rest of that verse. But you receive the Spirit of adoption whom we cry out, Abba, Father. He's our Heavenly Father. Alright? It's like the word Daddy. He's our daddy. Remember when you were young and you felt protected by your daddy. You felt loved by your daddy. And not all people experience that, but all Christians experience that. I understand what you're saying. God adopted you into his family, and we're going to live in his house forever and ever and ever. And you know what else I found about the flesh versus the spirit? I sleep a lot better, I feel a lot better, I act a lot better, my attitude's a lot better when I'm walking in the Spirit and not walking in the flesh. We battle our flesh all the time. And folks, do not give in. Do not give in. Abba, Father, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Man, I, I cringe when I hear this answer to my question. If you were to die today, would you go? I'm asking somebody, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? Well, I hope so. All of eternity is on I hope so. Well, I think so. Folks, the Spirit tells you yes, or the Spirit tells you no. And if children, then heirs. If heirs of God, then joint heirs with Christ. Figure this out, folks. Joint heirs with Christ. All right? I remember when I was younger, my dad had to co-pay for me to get a car. And guess what me and my dad were? We were joint heirs at that time. But I didn't make the payment he had to. And I knew better than not to make the payment. I was more feared of him at that time. <laughs> All right? Now, folks, get this. You're going to miss a huge point if you don't hear this. What Jesus has, you can have also. He did it for 33 and a half years. I think that's a pretty good track record. And that's what he's saying. He's my big brother. God is my heavenly Father. The Holy Spirit is inside of me. You've got three reasons to say no to temptation. Three there. Join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, we may also be glorified together. Betty, this is what you were saying. Suffering's a thing of life. Being a Christian, you are going to be persecuted and you are going to suffer. It doesn't take anything away from your walk with Christ. Bad things happen to good people, folks. But we can't stay there. We can't live there. We must count our blessings. We must name them one by one. One scripture, and I'm finished. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3, verse 14. For this reason, I bow on my knees to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory and to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Our strength comes from the Lord. Our strength comes from the Holy Spirit. You've got to feed that, folks. You've got to read your Bible. You have to pray. You have to, you know, uh, just be totally sold out to Him. Now look at verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Oh, folks, God loves you. 
God wants you to succeed. Some of you, God wants you to be saved today. Today. And look at this, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. There are some people that truly believe that there are two blessings. Okay? You get one of the blessings when you are saved, and later on you get a second blessing. Folks, you get the Holy Spirit and all the blessings when you are saved, when Christ comes into your life. Now look at verse 20. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly above, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Notice the words here, exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Let me, let me paraphrase with you. There is nothing that our God can't do. What do you need today? He's got it. I didn't say, what do you want today? I said, what do you need today? Everything is at your disposal. Everything is there. Everything is in the Word of God. There is no examples that He does not cover. Everything is in His Word. Exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask and think according to the power that works in us, the Holy Spirit, and to Him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ for all generations forever and ever. Don't tell me you can't do it. Don't tell me, but, but and you fill in the blank. But my Bible says, with God's help, I can do it. I can do all things through Christ. Folks, you have to realize who you are and whose you are. God is with us. Jesus Christ is our example. And the Holy Spirit indwells us. It's inside of us. Folks, you need to talk to God through the Holy Spirit. Father, thank You for Your Word and thank You for the Apostle Paul. God, I thank You for the chap chapter 8 of Romans. God, we don't have to see it. And God, I pray that even during this time of invitation, we will say to ourselves, I'm tired of sinning. I'm tired of fighting it. I pray, Lord, that Christians would rededicate their life to Christ, would get in the Word. And God, I pray that they would get back in the battle. I pray those who have given up, those who have quit, those that have said, what's the use, will get back into the fight, Lord. It's a spiritual battle, and we can win. We already have won. And God, I pray for the lost. If there's one here that's just not sure that they would go to heaven when they die, I pray today would be their day of salvation. And God, I pray for others. Maybe they need to follow the Lord in baptism or even come... Uh, on a promise of a letter, or join the church in, in some form, in some fashion. God, this is your church. This is your word we are speaking. So God, I pray the Holy Spirit would start moving. It already has. And God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just speak, speak to each of us. God, thank you for victory, victory over sin. The victory was at the cross. We've already won. So God, I pray that we will live like winners this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning here at Rye Hill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.